Okay, thanks, Lucy. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. Uh, this is definitely a topic near and dear to any uh, PCB manufacturer. Um, so today is primarily around uh, PCB manufacturing, but there's also DFA around assembly. But so, but if you have questions, please around either just definitely ask, and we can try and address those as well. So key key question. This is like the, our topics today, right? So. You know what's the purpose of DFM? Um, you know what what does it assist with? How does it help you? And you know what are some major guidelines that you shouldn't really break? Some rules that you shouldn't break. So that's what today's all about. So key key point, right? Um, DFM is a good practice. Uh, that really helps all around, right? So it helps um, get your prototypes out faster. It helps get your production run set up properly um, so you don't have issues when your board finally makes it to production. Uh, and it also keeps your overall cost down for your project, for your company, um, so DFM has, you know, wide implications around cost, reliability, uh, and um, is so basically it's super, super important. I think that's the takeaway um, from this. So what does DFM mean in terms of the PCB? Well, there's lots and lots of checks, so we won't be covering every single one. And it is very design dependent, but these are some of the common ones. And these are some of the, the ones that every designer should know about, um, whether they have, they go through their own software check or not. So, you know, one of the key things is, uh, you know, make setting up your etching for success. And, uh, you know, that really completely has to do with your layout. So avoiding sharp angles, um, avoiding slivers, and uh, Altium has a great DFM tool to check for all of that uh, as well in real time. And then yes. next most, sorry, go ahead. Cadence. Oh, sorry, cadence, my bad. Uh, okay, so the next big topic is uh, annular ring. So annular rings are, you know, the most, commonly asked question and depending on your stack up and your class that's when annular ring uh, guidelines uh, come into play and uh, next would be things like uh, board warpage so if you don't think about board warpage uh, you'll think about it when it happens to you uh, because it really messes up installation assembly you know all those type of things um, understanding the thermal management uh, from a layout perspective, and then solder mask design uh, to avoid any kind of assembly issues, solder bridging, et cetera, and then uh, silk screen as well. So these are the type of topics we'll be talking about. So here's a structured way to think about uh, DFM. Uh, when you're you know, working on your design, start with your stack up and make sure your stack up is designed properly. And this is even before you start any layout. Um, once you have your stack up and your component placements, you know, you start your, your routing. And even if all your routing rules aren't set up properly, you should still be aware of what's critical and what's not. So when you leave this webinar today, you should have that uh, in, your, in your tool chest. When you set up your your drills understand that you're setting yourself up for success. You're setting yourself up for the right class of product, uh, be it medical or aerospace or military um, or even standard. And that, uh, you know, your, your fabricator agrees to your, to your drills. I think that's really key. And then lastly, solder mask, silk screen, and then getting your design files right. 
That's if, the, I may, I may, if I can jump in here real quick, um, um, being a, a designer in my past life, um, one of the rules that I had for my design team was that they couldn't uh, add any traces to a design if they had not spoken to our board house or the board house that we were going to use for that project meaning get a stack up, uh, understand the impedances and the trace widths required, understand the drilling aspects. Um, you know, if, if one of my designers uh, didn't talk to the board shop before starting a design, uh, they were in line to get fired, uh, basically, um, because we wanted our designs to go through that CAM department uh, as easily as possible without any issues. Because as we know, uh, anytime there's an issue uh, with the CAM data or the data going through the CAM department, that means delays and delays uh, cost money. So always talk to your board shop. Absolutely. And actually, I'm going to chime in on that too, on the solder mask and silkscreen stuff on the assembly side of the world too. Being inside of the contract manufacturing world for most of my career until I came over to Cadence, the amount of bad solder mask that you end up having and the amount of boards that we rejected um, because the designers didn't actually pay attention to what was going on with the solder mask becomes very, very evident. I would highly recommend you guys pay super close attention to it. What you don't know is, is in the contract manufacturing world, when we're doing the assembly on this, those guys are wizards. They just do amazing things to make stuff work. But that also talks case takes money and time. You may not pay for it on that board, but on the next board, we always kept track of it. We always kept track of it. Oh, yeah, these guys, man, they don't know what they're doing. And we know we got to add a factor. I call it the fudge factor. And we would add a fudge factor of 10% or 15% to the designs because we knew that they would come in, the solder mask would be bad, or the paste mask would be all hokey and pokey and everything else. And the silk would be all over the place and it would cost us more time. If you pay attention to your solder masks and how things are being done and really talk to your assembly shop and where they want it, and do you want it um, solder mask defined pads? How do you actually do that? What kind of clearances? What kind of tolerances? What type of process you're doing for it? It makes a very large difference. Um, and the other thing with the stack ups, um, we'll get in a little bit more into that. The 2581 process saves a lot of time. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. But with uh, the warpage and everything else, as uh, Amit was talking about, is it really becomes down to is having symmetrical. But wait a minute, I'm doing RF. How do I have symmetrical? This is actually where you really need to work with your fab shops and be very conscientious about how much copper you're removing from every single layer. Even if you have a symmetrical stack, if you have an RF area and you're having reference planes down to layer three or layer four from the top, so N minus three you end up having the amount of copper removed onto it and you end up getting slight warpage that can happen over a period of time because the thermal expansions change. Just little things like that you got to pay attention to. And you get, then you get the classic thing of, I got RF, I can't have signals in there because the RF engineer doesn't want it, but the fab shop needs it for a balancing so they don't have warpage. Yeah, well, welcome to the world of, wonderful world of design. There's never a right way of doing it. That's a great point. Uh -huh. Yeah, very nice points. Thanks. And please chime in more uh, so we can have a discussion around around these slides um, and, around, and, and just get the best knowledge to the participants today. So, yeah. Okay. So, and then, so, you know, again, this is just a, a high level what we're going to be going through today, right? So, we're going to start with the design files to submit because... I don't think it's people get that right still. Um, and um, then we'll talk about stack ups. Uh, and, uh, you know, what we, again, we can't talk about everything, but this is what we think is important uh, today. <laughs> 